Hi everybody! I'm doing a session for Mark today. This is a soul rebirth journey, um, so it's going to be a full hour long. And Mark's got kind of an extraordinary experience going on in his life, and we're going to learn a lot of things about um, what happens when you feel like you're just sort of lost in the dark and you really want to feel the light again. Um, that's kind of Mark's experience. So I'm going to read his goals and then we're going to go, I'm going to go into your spiritual atmosphere, Mark, and then we'll see what um, is there and we'll, I, my spirit guides, higher self, your spirit guides and higher self, we're going to make you feel awesome today, okay? And we're going to teach you a lot about your experience, your soul, um, and just c clean out all that dark stuff and bring the light in so you'll actually feel it as a human being feel surrounded by light. It's going to make you feel so much better. So I'm just going to go ahead and read um, what you've shared and, and then we'll get started. So you say, I am in a deep, dark place. I hit a wall in my life and I feel lost and disconnected. My reality feels twisted and distorted. Nothing makes sense. I want to know who I really am. I want to experience and know love. I want to be in the light. If it is possible, I would like to know what are my higher self and spirit guides saying about what I'm experiencing right now. This is going to be a powerful experience. It really means a lot that you're open to sharing this on YouTube because this is this is a really this people on the planet are are in these in the same bracket as you. You're not alone, Mark, at all. And I think a lot of people are going to learn something for themselves thanks to your soul's open mindedness to share. So I'm just reacclimating because there's a lot I want to make sure we touch on. Okay. Make sure my volume is off here. There's no surprises. I'm going to turn this off too. Okay. I'm just going to relax, Mark, and get connected with your spiritual atmosphere. I'm just talking to my spirit guides, higher self. Your spirit guides, higher self. And there's angelic energy that's wanting to also participate. A really, really big, massive angel. <sighs> Basically, I'm looking, the scene looks like, um, here you are, Mark. Um, there's a massive, like, the planet Earth, and then you're inside of it. Um, it's kind of what it's like. It's just a huge sphere, like what is like a planetary sphere, and then you're on the inside. Um, and then we're all just sort of gathering around up above, and there's just this massive angel, just like pure white light energy is just be beaming out like a lighthouse, you know? So we have this angel that's like a lighthouse trying to be the beacon. Here, come find me in the dark. Um, so here I am, you can find me in the dark. So this like bright light keeps like beaming out and beaming out and you seem kind of um, not able to see it, not able to feel it, not able to find your way to it. So now that we're doing this session here, um, we can help you find the connection to that light again so you can feel whole. I'm not convinced, I think this angel is actually you, but I don't know yet. <laughs> All I know is there's a massive angel that's really trying to help you find your way back home, which is in the light. And there's the rest of us gathering, we're all smiling, we're really excited right now. We're really proud of you. We love you so much, and um, we're really proud of you for doing the hardest thing possible, which is to ask for help when you feel so sort of like stuck inside so deep 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 down inside it's very hard to ask for help how did you do it how did you find a way to ask for help when there's so much of this heavy dark energy shrouding you and telling you not to do it don't ask for help continue to suffer inside yourself how did you find a voice to ask for help it's really powerful and very impressive you need to give yourself a lot of credit. This is only the beginning. It's starting to feel a little disorienting because I'm gonna, it's the scene's changing. There's new information, new layers um, that I'm gonna be going into here, okay? This is getting tougher. I don't like the way this feels. 
Um, I Abby, totally fine. I'm, I, but if this is part of the wisdom, and it, I'm telling you, it feels disgusting in here. Um, it feels like nasty things are all over me and just like crawling all over me and um, like touching me and eating at me. Um, there's like lots, and lots, like like literally, they're like fingers like all over, like thousands and thousands of things, um, just like nibbling on me. But they don't go into me. They're just like, but they're very. It's, it's, it feels, um, like a really gross space, um, full of nasty insects, um, that there's like a stinkiness, um, there's a lot of heavy goopiness in here, um, they're feeding off of my own, f like, feelings of sadness or repressiveness, I'm like repressing my joy inside, um, but they're assisting with that. Um, so they're pretty preventing you from really getting the light out because they want to keep it dark in here um, They feel at home in a place that is dark and stinky and foul and um, they want to help you be in balance with them Because you create the right environment for them. These are these are mindless Mindless things. They're just mindless consciousness so to speak that are attracted to this type of energy. They're not gonna hurt you um, they're only gonna um, Manipulate like your vibration is saying I want you in my life So they're coming here um, to help keep your vibration consistent. Okay, um, they're making it a uh, it's like a symbiotic relationship um, You help them they help you but truly deep down inside this isn't what you want and you're discovering that now um, so in the energetic layers of your spiritual atmosphere, um, you have an actual world, a spiritual world, um, where there's living consciousness that are feeding off of you. Um, they're totally mindless. They're not like gonna, they're I like, they're, I can make them go away like that, but I have to tell you and explain to you what's going on so you can understand. Okay. Um, a lot of people get afraid when I, you know, when they hear that there might be things feeding off of them. It's like, you know what? It's an infinite universe. Like, if you want to be negative, negative things are going to be there. Um, they're going to help you stay negative. Um, some people will be negative the rest of their life and they're going to just be grumpy. You know, the grumpy dwarf. Um, they're always going to be that way. Um, but there's some people who are always going to be happy and they're going to attract a lot of positive energy because um, happy vibrations attract happy vibrations, you know? So um, when you surround yourself with really positive people, it just keeps lifting you up and you lift each other up. But when you surround yourself with negativity and complaining all the time and people who are going to complain back and you just kind of share in the complaints, you keep each other at that level, right? So in this way, you have no idea that they're there, um, but they love you for, you know, this is their version of love. Let's just keep things at this level. That's what you're saying. I want it to stay at this level. So they're going to help you. It's a symbiotic relationship. It's a friendship. And they're not evil. They're just naturally attracted. They're, they're magnetically gravitating. So um, you're the right magnet. So as I continue to watch them, it's you here. They're just crawling all over you. It's really thick and um, the energy is really thick in here. It's interesting because usually I am in like a first person experience. So I, I am you, you are me and I'm a feeling it like I was, but now I'm sort of just like a third party observer um, and I'm watching you in this space. It's really thick. I mean, there's a dense orb around you. There's all these little critters everywhere. I just share love into the orb. And, and the critters just start to kind of stop moving. They just relax their movements. I'm really a bright light in here. I touch the orb. I I tell you I tell you I love you. And you're not alone in this world. I give you a very big hug. I crack the orb open so you're able to breathe again. The critters just turn to dust. Were they real consciousness or were they sort of created by your experience? When they're now dust, they're just going to transform into something else some other time. I, I lift you up, you're sort of like um, somebody who's skin and bones exhausted, um, barely able to stand on their own two feet. So I just lift you up and then I carry you up and out of here. 
you're having an emotional reaction from this because it feels like relief for the first time. There's so much more to go because there's just so, like, I don't know how you, you are a master. The fact that you've created this many layers of dark density, like, you worked hard to do this. I mean, you put an effort into this. I have a feeling it's more like, well, I didn't, I didn't do this. Yes, you did. <laughs> you really did do this. Um, I get how society influences us to do this to ourselves, and it feels like I didn't do this, um, the world did it to me, um, or the world inspired me to feel this way. Um, so in the process of living your life, you masterfully created quite a space of density um, around yourself and made it almost impossible for you to get yourself out of this. Well, why did you do this to yourself? Good news is this part of your consciousness that is very exhausted and worn out, um, bringing it into the light. There's a lot of parts of your consciousness. This is just one of millions, billions, trillions, infinite numbers of consciousness that are all you. They're all parts of you. And just continuing to take you up into the light, um, raising your vibration. But there's more, there's so much more. They're starting, I feel the energy shifting again. I'm gonna be going into it yet another layer. <sighs> this is like, like again, what is much like a bowling ball? It's really heavy. Um, and here it's like, that that ball actually weighs quite a lot. Oh my gosh, it's like, I can't lift this one. I need something lighter. Um, but you are lifting the heaviest bowling ball of all time. Um, and it's just a small orb, you know? <laughs> and you're inside of it again. We're seeing what is this orb with you inside of it. And it's very heavy. Um, something's changing in this version. Um, you're, you are much like a bowling ball and you're rolling down a small hill, but it's all dark in here. Um, it's not necessarily a nature hill, it's more like a, a man-made um, creation of a hill and it's very smooth surface as it goes down and then it just continues to roll. It feels like it's going to roll up like a curvature and then continue to go down, but it's all dark everywhere. It's just there's some sort of um, element of, of a background to this. I'm just watching. It is, it's an odd contraption. The bowling ball rolls to what I thought would be a curvature, but it just stops right there. Um, the contraption takes like an arm um, that lifts the bowling ball up kind of like this. There's other pieces of technology that come around and move the bowling ball. It's like quite a contraption. I don't know what its purpose is other than to um, uniquely move a bowling ball in different directions. But it's very crafty. It's very clever. It's like, how do people create those old pocket watches? I mean, there's so many tiny little elements, um, tiniest little gears. They have to go in just the right spots to make it all work, you know? How is it that this contraption was designed like so articulately, so um, technologically designed um, that it would <laughs> do all of these things? Like it's a marvel. It's an actual marvel. But what is its purpose? I'm still learning about it. There's a, there's a lot of just, there's something of a man standing here. I can't really see him. I'm not really sure if I should pay any attention to him or not. I'm kind of interested in this Marvel right now and, and learning about it. Um, he's kind of huffing and puffing at me. Um, doesn't like me standing here. It's like, I, so I don't know. I just start, I instantly get really happy inside my heart. Um, I say, you, you noticed me. You, you came all this long way to say hi to me? Oh, that's so nice of you. He actually came to f confront me face to face. Not many people will do that. He just, he keeps a wall between us. He doesn't really, he doesn't want to come all the way, he doesn't want to walk through the door to, to confront me 
completely confront me. Um, he wants to keep a safe distance from me while also confronting me at the same time. Like, it's kind of one of those moments where um, something's not right and you need to go... Con it, it could be like... Uh, I already have a story in mind, but it's like too personal. I can't really tell you. But um, let's just say uh, something really messed up happens. And you know it's messed up and you know that that person really did wrong and that's not acceptable. And you wonder, is it worth my time to get really stressed out about this and have a conversation with this person? Um, is it really worth my time? Um, or is it just so wrong that it has to be worth my time? Um, because it, ha it has to be acknowledged directly. Um, so you actually have to go and confront this person and there's just, it's like so childish, it's so very disappointing, it's so stupid on the level of, really? You really did that? And now I actually have to take the time to come over here and tell you why you don't do that and have a conversation with you about it. This is just really low. This is beyond low, but I have to do it for, it's like, a, I have to make it, it's the point. I mean, I have to make a point to, to say something. Um, so this guy, for some reason, like I'm really impressed that he um, is choosing to come and communicate with me. He doesn't like me standing on his property is kind of what this is like. It's like a weird neighbor thing. Um, this neighbor is, is coming over to have a conversation with me about something that I'm not doing right. Um, and it's actually like he worked up um, a lot of energy and a lot of momentum to actually come knock on my door and tell me something. And so I'm like, oh, well, what a surprise. You're standing here. Um, why don't you come in? I'm not coming in. I'm not going to come in and talk to you. I'm going to talk through the wall. Now, because he just can't confront me face to face. He doesn't want to look at me eye to eye. Um, there's something that still makes him too vulnerable. But the thing is, is I haven't done anything wrong. I'm just, he just doesn't like me. <laughs> it's sort of like back in the day, um, if you're black, we just don't like you. <laughs> we don't know it just because you're black, you know? Like we're still working on this today, but there's something of this interaction. It's like, there's no real, I didn't do anything wrong. There's no reason why, um, but you really feel the need to tell me something, but keep a safe distance. Um, and you can't look me in the eye and there's really no reason why you're here There's no valid reason why other than you just don't like the way I look or something like that I'm not gonna put up with it. So I actually come out the door and meet him. He's so angry at me He has a whole army to to fight me to destroy me to rip me apart How dare you walk into you know the spiritual atmosphere? This is our home. This is our place um, you don't transform our place into love. You don't do that. We are going to kill you. Like that's there's like thousands of like soldiers here ready to annihilate me. You see, this is um, how this is how awesome and masterfully and marvelously you have created um, a defense system to ensure that you never grow out of this. And even when the light comes in, it's gonna try and attack me. It's not a big deal because it's afraid and love is just real like it's like paper and then fear becomes a rock like a fist but paper always wins because love always wins now however if i want to be like oh, oh my god i better run away now fear is gonna go punch me so i can't do that i'm just gonna stand here and face your fear right and then i'm just gonna do this to it and then it's going to go away okay it might even turn into dust I give him a long hug, even though he doesn't like it. Um, I create thousands of myself and hug all these other soldiers. I tell him it's actually a part of your ego. Um, I tell him that this, so I'll talk about ego in just a minute, but um, I tell him that it, it's okay. Um, 
I understand now. I, I encourage him to just put down, he actually has a sword and a shield and he's dressed like kind of like a Roman soldier, but doesn't have like a helmet on or anything. More like a gladiator or something more like that because he seems less um, protected, but he has a shield and a sword. Um, he's a strong man. And then all the others look very much so like him. You're just talking to him and helping him relax. <sighs> giving him a huge hug. I'm gonna talk to him for a little while. There's so much more work to do. Ego is basically, ego can be one of our worst nightmares, especially when um, it's programmed to believe that the balance is this. So your ego believes that the most harmonizing balance for you is to feel like kind of closed inside of a ball. Um, but it's ego that also did it, you know? So ego is always trying to um, help you to thrive to thrive in this world, but ego is a very hard thing to um, help it understand what, what true balance is all about. And ego is really associated with the mind, and the mind is always going to tell you what's best for you, but the heart is always going to tell you something else. The heart could even ask you to do things that like it feels like that's the most impossible thing to do. Like you could be in a relationship for a really long time and the mind says just stay, you know, it's going to be a lot harder to relieve this relationship than it um, it would be to just stay. You might as well just stay. Even if it's it's really hard emotionally, it's hard in every um, area that you can imagine for both sides of the relationship, but you just stay together because it'll be easier that way, yet you hate each other. The ego is going to say that's balance. Your heart, however, is going to override ego and it's going to say that's not balance. That's not what love is. So when you start like working, like we all do it, we all do it. We are all vulnerable to ego. So here ego is coming to um, annihilate change. I'm change. Ego is very vulnerable with change. So it's time to move, um, you know, you got fired from a job, let's say. Oh my God, ego is gonna freak out because that's change. Um, or your heart is really encouraging you to, to move um, to another location, which is going to change everything in your life. And your mind is saying, coming up with a million one reasons why you should not listen to your heart. That's ego, right? So here we have ego is vulnerable because change is here. And that means ego is going to have to change. So we just love ego for doing the best that it can to give you balance that it thinks is right for you. We don't, we don't put ego down. We don't tell ego... Um, yeah, nice job. You know, we don't do that. We just say, ego, thank you for everything you have done. Um, you've done a beautiful job, and I know that this is um, what you were thinking was the best for you. And um, but we've got to change it up a little bit, and that's okay because you don't have to work through change alone. That's why I'm here. I am change, and I'm gonna help you. In the process of this very loving interaction and the energy is just really relaxing considerably, there is just a massive, I mean, like black hole or something. <sighs> but it's not sucking things in. It almost looks like a black planet. Again with the black orbs here. Hmm. There's so much work to do because you really have been like this for a while and it's there's so many layers here of density that we're going going through. All these soldiers are starting to relax considerably. It feels like we've made amends. Um, we've brought peace to this. So I am gravitating towards this massive black hole, which is like an orb, a black planet. I mean, it's just pure darkness. In the distance, it looks like a long ways away, but I can see it because it's so massive. 
like imagine if the moon was closer or the moon was just simply the size of Jupiter, you know, now it's taking up the whole sky. So that's like a huge black um, thing. <laughs> It's interesting because this world is a reddish color. There's a reddish colored sand in the air. Um, everything is dead outside on the other side of the door. There's nothing growing here. Um, it's like a red planet. It's like Mars or something. It's just like a red dead world. Um, there's just red sand blowing everywhere. I'm walking along um, a bridge. It's a, made out of like red clay or something. It's just everything is like a red dirt. But it's sturdy enough. I'm walking across it out into outer space. So you would think I'd be going upwards, but I'm actually just going straight ahead um, and towards this massive black portal or something. The sidewalk ends here. There's an eerie silence to it, although there is still red, some red sands blowing. It's not like a dust storm, it's more like a really creepy dead town I just walked through and um, some like breeze every now and then that blows a little red sand and it's just eerie silence. That's what it's like. You're a marvel, I mean you created all of this stuff yourself. I gotta go see why you created this. I mean, I'm marveling. I, I don't know what it is because it looks like um, a black hole. It looks like a giant black planet inside of black energy. It looks like a black portal. Um, it's just like a circular darkness, just pure darkness. But it also looks like it's fire, like black flame. Um, but there's also some sort of deadness to it. That reminds me of just a black planet with nothing on it, but like black sand or something. This is all I'm telling you, this isn't actually real, this is all like fabricated energy junk because of what you've been feeling inside of yourself. Um, but where did it come from and why did this happen? It's not like somebody put this in here, you did it to yourself. Man, that's hard, that's hard for you to hear because you really feel that like there's more, um, you really feel like there is some, some bigger, like not nice beings that are, um, that are making this kind of happen too, as well. Like they're making it as well happen. So we'll, I always give your conscious reactness reaction. Um, I always honor that reaction. So let's, I'm still trying to make sense of this black thing. There's three beings um, that appear. One is like a red colored energy, one is like a blue, bluish purple, and the other is like a, almost like a neon green. Um, they all look identical. They all have like a white toga like, but it's kind of browned from where. Um, they have odd things on their heads. Um, the red one, I mean, I don't know, are they horns? Are they like snakes for hair? Or are they what? They're kind of co coiled up um, and only around their head do they glow the specific color. Um, red, like a reddish orange color, like really, really intense, rich, like burnt orange. Um, very pretty. And this like purpley color, um, it's like bluish purple color, but it's got some gray tones to it. Um, then this, what is like a neon green color? These are supposedly um, working to imprison, like create a self imprisonment for you. But the more I look at them, the smaller and smaller that they get. And I see them um, before me getting very small and then I see them at a distance, um, standing tall at a distance as there's this massive thing over here, like a black hole type thing. It's like a burning, raging thing, but it's also a dead planet, but it's also a portal. Like, what is it? I'm just observing it, um, but I'm seeing these happen simultaneously. I'm exploring them at the same time. Hmm. Hmm.
There's just so much chaos and calamity. Like there's a bunch of odd axes that start flying towards me. Um, this red orange sort of planet I'm standing on with the sidewalk, like it's like a bridge with a with a higher up walkway, and that just. I mean, it just goes to nowhere, but it's like a planet of its own kind, and we're all falling towards this black hole thing right now. It's just like a, like a huge chaos or calamity, but again, it's, it sort of looks way worse than it really is. I mean, it just, like, things want to... It's almost like it wants to believe that it's, there's way more going on than there really is. I talk to your consciousness, I say, what if those three beings are just fabricated in order to prove some kind of point? And what if all of this calamity and um, putting yourself inside of the darkness, it was your creation all along? What if you are the master demon um, at foot here? What if that is the truth? Um, how would you relate to that? Would that make you feel mad like I like I didn't do enough like I didn't find enough I didn't look hard enough and um, would you insist that that's not the truth that you didn't do this to yourself I say one of the hardest things that we can come to accept is that truly this calamity this darkness this all of this creation is a reflection of how amazing your soul is it's a master at creating chaos um, but why did you create chaos for yourself? Why did you do that to yourself? Will you tell me? I'm not gonna look at any of these other things because they aren't real. They're just more like fabricated junk. They're just more garbage. It's like the insects eating off of you. It's just fabricated junk. Um, and I'm gonna continue to help you to let go of this self this self chaos i don't know why it's like this so i'm talking to you about it there's so much love energy just exchanged from my heart to your heart as we talk because i'm so ridiculously compassionate and i've been there myself and i know i know that what it's like to be in your shoes because i've been there myself and i've done it to myself too and um, there's more to the reason why these things happen and why, why our personal experience was attracted to creating that type of, ex you know, that to happen. Um, so we need to understand why your soul was attracted, why you were attracted in this lifetime to doing this to yourself. Um, we're actually going to go into a place that's full of thriving green grasses, um, beautiful flowers really reminds me of Hawaii uh, because this is who you truly are and I have to do what I can do to help remind you of who you truly are because we could have fun in your chaos circus all day long um, but we're not really going to find anything there except more of what we've already seen before it's just um, and there's nothing really it's sort of like not being able to let go of insisting that something um, it's like insisting that there, like for instance, some people will continue to insist that there's going to be a terrible calamity that's going to wipe out the human race and they will feel that way for the rest of their lives. Where is that coming from? Why are they holding on to that fear and why are they spreading that fear for the rest of us to decide whether we're going to be afraid too? Um, is that because they died in Atlantis, you know, there was a huge calamity and now they can't let go of how they died in another time and place? Um, you know, and now they're bringing that into today's world and insisting we're all going to die again. Um, so when is it time to let go and just live your life and say, you know, heck with it. If a giant meteorite falls out of the sky and destroys the entire planet, I'm here when it happens. Awesome. I actually can say, I'll put it on my soul bucket list that I got to die on a planet that, that ended up falling into chaos because a meteor hit it. Um, bucket list item done. Um, so we just learn to just accept the things that come and don't feel terrorized by them. So in your situation, what is your soul still holding on to from some other lifetime? Like there's something about your soul has not been able to forgive itself, has not been able to let go of something. Um, there's something that happened along the lines that now we, 
what why how, we're working with that energy still today um, and we're not letting go of it and we're not we're not saying it's there's something still holding on to some something from the past it's like somebody who died in Atlantis they crashed and burned um, no more bye-bye is now one of these people it's a doomsday person I'm insisting there's going to be a giant calamity and they'll save for the rest of their lives and then they will die in some hospital bed with cancer um, it never happened and it won't happen. <laughs> 20,000 years later still hasn't happened. But they will continue to hold on to it for lifetimes until they say, fuck it. You know what? I'm done waiting for the ultimate chaos to destroy me and the whole planet. I'm just going to live my life. And if it happens, it happens. Um, so there's something about you. There's a timeline with you. It has nothing to do with Atlantis. I'm not picking up on Atlantis. However, it feels like there's something with your timeline that you did something way, 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 way a long time ago. And your soul is just like this big. It's a little grain of sand in your spiritual atmosphere. And your soul has been so hard on you over all these lifetimes. It's not been able to forgive itself. has not been able to move on from that. And now it's really rocking up and kicking up all this chaos and saying, this is real. This is real. You, you, you know, it really is like this. People are hurting you and all this stuff. And it's from a long time ago. It's not actually it's happening today. It's not actually the truth for you today. It's something, it's, it's time. Your soul said, I'm gonna go into this lifetime and I'm going to finalize that tiny grain of sand from 10,000 lifetimes ago. I'm gonna put that to rest. And I'm gonna work on that in this lifetime. And in the process of working on it, you've kicked up all of this chaos and have felt really, really shrouded in the darkness and putting yourself deep, 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 deep down inside what is a massive planet of misery and um, not being able to allow yourself to find the light because you've been punishing yourself for something. Um, what is it though? It hurts really bad. I pick up what is a grain of sand from your soul timeline that is um, echoing really loudly in this lifetime right now. And it is like terror. It is burning the living daylights out of my finger. It's gonna burn a hole through my finger. Um, it hates me. Um, how dare you even think you can touch me? Um, like I will kill you. This little grain of sand is saying all this to me. But it is powerful in how it hurts inside. And that hurt on the inside is wanting everything else to hurt too. Just the tiniest little grain of sand in your total consciousness, which is so infinite. But this tiny grain of sand is so blown up like it is your whole life today. So it's, it feels a lot bigger than it really is. I'm handing this grain of sand and putting it into the palm of your consciousness and I'm saying, what are you going to do about this? It doesn't seem to hurt you. And it just sits there, you you pick it up, it just seems like it's, it's nothing and you kind of, you just flick it off of there. I say, I'm looking at you, I'm trying to figure out what is this all about. You flicked it off into what is like a massive desert, and so it could be lost forever. And I go into the desert to try to find that one grain of sand, and now it's lost amongst infinite numbers of grains of sand um, to be forgotten and never seen again, ever, ever again. And I say, why did you do that? You know this grain of sand, you have to look at it. I say, voila. <laughs> And then I just put it in your hand and I say, you can throw that in the desert as many times as you want. This, I can find this grain of sand a million times over and I will never lose it ever again because my heart remembers it. And I can find this grain of sand in trillions of grains of sand because my heart is connected to that one because your heart is. And so I put it back into your hand and I say, this is not something you're going to just flick away. You need to look at this. You hate looking at it. Um, when you look at it, it rots your whole hand. You're standing in a world where there's like a terrible, fierce wind that will rip your body to shreds. Um, it, it will evaporate or disintegrate you and you will feel every moment of it. Um, it's so ridiculously painful. Um, the grain of sand goes into your palm, like the eye of your palm, and then it goes down your bloodstream. Um, inside of you and it's like a terrible virus that is going to kill you um, and it's absolutely horrendous the pain and suffering that this grain of sand is causing 
it's like screaming um, forever and ever 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 and it's never enough screaming in order to justify what took place. It's extremely painful. There's sort of a, in this world, um, again, we're looking at a kind of a galactic scene. Um, there's kind of like quite a menace um, consciousness, like a, a consciousness of chaos that stands before you um, and your number is up. Um, it's your time to face the, um, the fearsome chaos. And the chaos is half dead, um, is like a skeleton with a gruesome smile, um, has rotted flesh, um, fierce eyes, and it's now your turn to visit with chaos. And it's very, it's a total terrorizing experience. It's an awful, 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 awful experience. It's, it's like, it's like the first time your soul ever incarnated and really knew what chaos actually felt like and it sucks like old souls have met their have had their number come up um, so many times that now we're we're courageous and we fight against chaos we have our moments where we cry like babies too because it's not fun stuff um no no master soul has ever not cried um in the face of a fearsome chaos moment um, it's part of the experience is to feel it, is to remember it, is to endure it, is to overcome it or to be destroyed by it. Um, so this is like, like I'm, I'm experiencing what is a soul for the first time um, on a level up experience, really facing what is the greatest terror in the universe face to face. Um, so what does that mean exactly? Is it truly, it, it is truly a lifetime of really, really, really awful, awful nightmare. Nightmare experiences at, that terrorize you and terrorize you and terrorize you. Like, how long did this last? What are we talking about here? This goes beyond, like, you're, you've been captured by the medieval forces. Now you're in the dungeon and you're going to be fingernails ripped out and it's going to be, you know, two weeks of nightmare physical pain before your body finally gives out and you die. Um, this is different. I don't know what this is, but it's not pretty. It feels like it's on a spiritual level. How many human beings on the planet are enduring a psychic nightmare, you know? And nobody knows about it. And most of the people that are enduring a psychic nightmare, you know, they'll go to the mental institution and they'll be looked at as a crazy person. And really, they actually are going through something um, spiritual. But science doesn't understand spiritual. Uh, medicine doesn't understand spiritual. So how do those two work together? They don't. So um, I'm just going to fill this one out and we'll just see where it goes. It's something along the lines of, this was a long time ago, okay? Remember that it has nothing to do with today. It has everything to do with a long time ago. Um, some type of lifetime where there was uh, like spiritual nightmares and uh, for the whole lifetime. Um, because it's a very long drawn out experience. It's on the human level of how we feel emotionally about things. Um, if you're an alien being, a spiritual nightmare is not going to be, it might not even be possible. Um, because of the way their consciousness is designed, um, if they don't have fear associated with their dynamic, the, their physical being, their incarnate being, their flesh and blood, if fear is not associated with their DNA or whatever, then they can't really be terrorized by anything, can they? If they don't, if they don't have that as part of their emotional being, they can't be terrorized. They have no fear. So it, some alien beings are never going to have a clue. So it feels like it's on a human level. So it feels like this world because there's fear involved and there's what feels like totally not right there's a lot of hatred and anger towards um, what had happened when really this chaos figure actually loves your soul so much um, and is honored honored when souls choose to say i'm ready now to receive the blessing that chaos provides um, and then in the lifetime it is it is going to break you, it is going to hurt, it is going to make you scream and cry, it is going to say, make you say, why me? Why is this happening to me? Um, and the whole time chaos loves you, the whole time chaos is breaking your bones and doing all this on an energy level, you know? It's on an emotionally breaking, mentally breaking, soul breaking um, experience. But it was actually something your soul said I was ready for. 
and it was so terrorizing, it was so tormenting, it was so mortifying, um, and there was really no escape from it. You could only endure it. It would be like walking through the desert for 40 days and 40 nights, but there's no end to this desert is the way it feels like. It's forever. Your soul is really still, still insists that this is ha happening still to me and it wasn't fair and the screaming is never enough because you're screaming on the inside. It hurts so bad, I mean, God. I'm still clearing this out of your spiritual atmosphere, so I'm kind of still um, observing it, it's still learning about it, okay? <sighs> because I have to bring you to peace with this. I have to help you to see that in some other lifetime you endured something so terrorizing nobody could even imagine. A lot of souls I will have this, no matter what. Every soul goes through this. Every ascended master has experienced this many times, even, to the point that they've ascended beyond it, right? So when you're first experiencing it, you it's going to be horrible. And then the second time you experience it, you're a little bit stronger. And the second, the third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, hundredth, hundredth time later, um, you start to get it. <laughs> you start to conquer it, right? Um, so you can't learn how to conquer that type of chaos until you um, feel broken by it first. And then you start to outsmart it, right? Because you become wiser from it. It's helping you considerably. <sighs> You're crying. You're wanting to. you wanting to know that it is safe to to let this go to rest, um, as in not wanting it to go away but actually you are taking the time to face it, to recall it in your soul um, as an incarnate being. Um, and your consciousness, your deeper conscious and everything is reacclimating to the memory, um, but knowing that it is safe to say that memory was a very long time ago, excuse me, a very long time ago. And it has nothing to do with you today. And it's okay to give that part of your soul a hug and say you did an amazing job. And to even see the beautiful side of chaos, which is love. And now love comes through, um, chaos's face changes from like a morbid like skeleton with rotting flesh and like fearsome eyes. It transforms into an angel that can finally give you a hug and say I was only called um, to help your soul learn and grow um, beyond. Not to force your soul to scream for all eternity, but I've been waiting for your soul to know it's time to let go. It's time to know it is safe to move on, and it was for the learning, and your soul chose it for the learning. Your soul is a mighty soul. Chaos's reflection changes to a quite a massive, extraordinary angel that comes down to give you a big hug. And I see it is very odd. I um, the version of you is much like a child with melted flesh and no eyes, no tongue. Um, it looks it's very it looks very morbid it's starting to i mean it feels like it was quite horrendous i mean looking at this what is a boy without any with his skin all melted it has no eyes no tongue Ugh. it's really sad It's really, really sad. It's just terrible. It's sort of one of those moments where it's like looking at what was done to kids and people at con Jewish concentration camps, you know? It's just like, it's just so messed up. It's just so messed up. Like, you can't even believe that that would ever happen to a kid or to an adult. I mean, it feels worse that it happens to kids because they're so innocent. It's really, really bad. <sighs> Felt like some type of real, like, psychic nightmare, but it's, it's the more that I see it, 
it's I, I know it's no wonder it, it was very terrorizing to every part of your senses and it was messed up on a severe level so it's like a bucket list item your soul did that your soul chose to have that experience and now you had it right that just goes to show how extraordinary your soul is mm. Chaos is no longer chaos, it's a massive angel that can finally hold you. There's no need for forgiveness, there's no need for anger, there's no need for anything. It was your sole cho choice to be that one, to be that person, to play that part, so that the whole of the world could continue to function. Because that part of the whole, of the collective consciousness, was turning into such a cancer, you took it upon yourself um, to absorb that pain and suffering, so all the other souls could be, could not have to endure it. You chose to endure it for them. It's like a Christ consciousness, but you would never have gone down in history as Jesus. You would just be some poor kid that nobody even knows about. But we know about you now, don't we? How many souls do you think do this? We don't even know who they are, but you're one of them. The angel just keeps holding what is a really, I mean, it's not like natural burnt flesh. It's really odd. And you're starting to feel the love. Again, there's no need for forgiveness by anybody because it was part of the choices of the greater good of all. You're starting to become a normal form. What is a boy? This is really hard for some reason. Because there's so much exhaustion involved with it. So much sorrow. It's so messed up and not right that humans have done this to each other. This is me continuing to help this rem be removed from your spiritual atmosphere. Shh. You need to be able to know that that grain of sand is a trophy and not something to be just flicked off like a gross booger or something. <laughs> like that is a trophy. Like that is a special like accomplishment and you need to be able to look at it to say that I did it and I'm in gratitude for my soul's extraordinary marvelous choices that other souls are not as strong as me yet um, and that's okay because I'm strong enough that's amazing to be able to say that and to know you did something like that for the greater good of all you don't understand how all those souls in the concentration camps did it for the greater good of all like like those extreme experiences that are happening all over the planet that we don't know about they're doing it for the greater good of all and we continue to just be ignorant about it but human beings really are torturing other human beings it's starting to ease up it's starting to feel a lot easier there's still a lot of weight associated with it it's really i mean it's like sadness that goes on and on and on and on Continue to help it relax, okay? This is pretty, this is really um, heavy duty, really intense.
Yeah. You're starting to fall asleep now. Uh, it's really hard to let go of the burnt skin. Like, it's really hard to let go of that part. The eyeballs, the tongue, like, it's really hard to let go of these things. Because it was just so messed up. Again, you're starting to fall asleep. Um, it feels like you are less attached to those details. It's just crazy, like how a trauma, such a severe trauma, like. <sighs> it makes us who we are today, you know? I'm still energetically focused on this. So, why, why are you like this today? What is it about this echoing memory that would inspire you to do this terrible closing off of yourself, like, hiding in the dark and not letting the light come in and just destroying yourself. You're trying to create a replica of what had happened, energetic replica on some level, like on a psychic level or spiritual level. And what had happened, that's, that's what's so, I'm trying to make sense of this. What had happened was definitely on an extreme level to hurt everything. I mean, it was going to destroy everything about you what was a child like it was going to destroy everything about you so now in another like previous life everything about you was destroyed and you're still working through acceptance of that or um, letting go proper letting go of that and now in this life here you're 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 creating the broken record effect because you're coming back with that into that frequency again so now when you enter into that frequency again in this lifetime you're reacclimating to something akin to what that was like so you could work through it again but you're doing it to yourself like emotionally spiritually mentally um, physically even like everything is becoming um, d destroyed by like trying to destroy yourself because you were trying to relive a moment that had already passed on some level akin to it um, but th this is on the energy level you're energetically doing this to yourself where this was an actual thing that happened on a physical level, but it's not just a physical level. It traumatized everything. It traumatized everything. <sighs> I'm still working on this. boggles my mind because everybody's soul experience like being here in your spiritual atmosphere everybody a lot of people relate to you like I know there's people are gonna hear what you said at the beginning and they're gonna say I feel the same way um, I Abby have also been there in my own life for like 20 straight years I too was very very like like this um, in the dark, didn't understand, but it was my own personal version of the same, you know? It feels like the same thing, but it's different. A different, totally different echoing version of it. So this is what your explanation is. This is why you're feeling it like this. Um, whereas somebody else who feels it feels like that, it's gonna look, there's a different reason that's gonna look totally different when I walk into their spiritual atmosphere. You're already starting, I mean, it feels, it's a lot easier. Um, it's funny because sometimes it's like massage therapists. Like I, I run into these knots and it's like, oh my God, this is so huge. I don't even know how to begin. It feels like this. So I just start with that and we just work our way through all the details. 
and then we just start to totally tr slowly unravel the bigger picture and then we start to make sense of the bigger picture and then why how that is affecting you today or why you are treating what happened in the past like this today so that way we can just let it all go properly not by saying I don't want to look at it but by saying I'm at peace with it now um, and then now that angel can start to really help you to just lift you up and out of that like it's cracking open the egg you're feeling like a reborn baby chicken <laughs> but you're human and it's like yeah, I'm new again I feel new again that's kind of what this is um, now that I'm getting to see the bigger picture of it all this angel is definitely not you but you are an angel by the way but you're not this one <laughs> This angel needed to, this angel is both an angel of darkness and an angel of light. And so this angel is, can be the right frequency to deal the hand of suffering, um, but it also is the right frequency to deal the hand of unconditional love to bring you back home again. So souls that have these terrorizing experiences in the incarnate state, because the soul believes it's a human and not a spirit, um, it can get trapped um, in that reality even after death. Um, so it can continue on a fragment of the total of consciousness, okay? So the whole soul isn't just going to be trapped, just a fragment of it. It's a soul fragment. But that fragment can be like a tiny grain of sand, but it can be so powerful and so loud that it can really rattle your cages in other lifetimes, right? So now this angel's finally, you know, the angel of like the angel of light and the angel of dark or whatever, and oneness is able to now be that unconditional love to nurture you and help you back into the light. It's its role. Its role is to be this. It doesn't make it an evil angel. It just it it works with both frequencies in order to help souls grow, in order to keep the balance in the collective consciousness. It's feeling everything, I mean, it's still feeling a lot better. This is such a big deal that, I mean, it's still, I still am working through it and it's, it's amazing how many ways this energy is shifting and changing as I continue to help you find um, peace with it. <laughs> It feels like your heart is opening up. It feels like your heart is inhaling and exhaling air. It feels like your third eye is opening up, inhaling and exhaling air, your voice. Um, it feels like around your head is starting to open up special energies that um, feel like light and inhaling and exhaling light. Um, your shoulders are feeling a lot more relaxed. Um, any energy burdens are letting go. We're letting go of energy burdens around the torso um, and the legs. Um, we're just kind of rebirthing. We're like taking you out of a goop and then we're just letting you be yourself again. So your shoulders are feeling better. There's these massive wings, sure enough, coming out. Ugh. I have, I'm stretching as you're stretching. It feels so much better. So I'm just helping you to, to feel like, oh, that energy. <sighs> that was a hard one. You're feeling a lot better. <laughs> I just gotta stay with it for just a moment. This it's just needs more time. You don't know what to do now. You look at this big angel. You know, this big angel is like three or four times your size. You seem like you're not familiar with who you are. Um, you've forgotten who you are. This big angel looks at you and smiles. Um, it turns into light um, and you feel inspired to follow suit. So you too also turn into light. Um, it's like a baby bird. Um, you're not sure how to fly um, with your wings. Yeah, the angel is teaching you how to acclimate your body again um, to work with your angel wings um, in order to fly. Um, it's really too also a message of um, self-love, self-empowerment, and taking control of your life. Um, you, you've not been able to experience that because of all of this, 
in on this frequency level so now you're working with such a high frequency of change that it's like you're learning how to crawl and then walk all over again um, because you're gonna feel so new now you're gonna feel so new I, I watch um, as a third party and my eyes are just like in awe my face, my, my stance, my presence, I just, in a lot of reverence of your soul, um, it may, brings my heart so much happiness to see you um, reacclimating to who you truly are and to be working with this amazing angel. This angel is not going to deal you the, the, the chaos hand. <laughs> this angel is going to repay, be working to help repair you from what you had endured. I mean, this angel is this angel is very very special. I mean, this angel is very ancient, um, one of a kind, a really special angel. <sighs> I mean, just sort of in awe of the moment, watching you both. The angel is really is teaching you how to be yourself again, um, how to work with who you are, and we're talking about your higher self, your true self, um, and being that as a human being, it's all new to you. It's totally all new to you. It's, it's take, you got, you need time to repair. Like, this is all new to you. But you're a fast learner, actually. And you really can work with energy. Like, you have, get letting all that heavy stuff go. You're going to be able to feel a lot more, all different varieties of energy. And you can work with energy very easily, just like I do. I work with energy very easily because I can feel all different varieties of energy. That I'm at peace with it, and then I learn about it, and then I teach um, what it feels like to me. So I can help you um, find the healing you need and then grow beyond it, right? And then to discover who you truly are. And you truly are like an energy worker. I mean, you truly are an energy worker. But there's a lot, I mean, there's a lot of mystery to you. They're not going to let, they're not going to say anything. It's, it's right now, we just need you to learn how to be yourself again and how to just be happy and to be at peace with everything and to feel refreshed each and every day. So just to be used to living your life as a human being, but on a different level of self-love and peace, inner peace, um, that's where you start this um, transitioning process from you're kind of reborn right now to such a new way that we just gotta get used to being a new type of human who is full of light now and happy. Um, and then you you work your way into the next thing. That's all I can tell you. Wow, I'm a bit out of it, but that was pretty neat to experience. It's like when you, when you get to know people um, or who they are deep down inside, but on, on the soul level, it's like really extraordinary what you can discover. All right, that's all I can say. Thank you again for being open to sharing the experience for others. And um, uh, for those of you watching, I'm still out of it. For those of you watching, um, if you're interested in experiencing a soul rework journey, please visit me at my website at abbynormalswisdomquest.com. Um, thank you all, and I wish you all a wonderful day.